watch and groans for the revealing of the sons of God. His holy invasion for a righteous revolution forged in his fire. Weaponized for warfare, roaring in his rest, and dancing in his reign. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Cimarron Tribe. I'm Kelly Marie, and I am so glad that you are here this evening. Tonight is going to be a very powerful night with the Spirit of the Lord I have got a serious word to deliver, but also I don't do this very often, but tonight I'm going to actually be sharing a fulfillment to a word of prophecy that the Lord had me prophesy August the 17th last year in 2022, and I'm going to be going over that. It is going to be very powerful. I want to welcome all of you on my Facebook community and those of you that are on my YouTube community. Welcome again. I'm praising God for how the Holy Spirit is going to encourage you and strengthen you with his joy and anchor you in his peace and his perfect love. And um, this is going to be a wild night. Uh, we're going to be talking about some very important things that are happening right now in our nation, America. Um, I really encourage those of you who have not yet seen The Sound of Freedom. I am absolutely urging so many of you to definitely go into the theaters and support this movement because... Lo and behold, some of you remember when the Lord had me prophesy spontaneously on one of my broadcasts in 2021, and it was before June of 2021 when the Spirit of the Lord began to say, I am now unleashing my top gun. They are locked and loaded. The target is locked and loaded. And when the Lord had me prophesy about the top gun that he was going to release, all of a sudden I typed in top gun because I, I literally was like, okay, Lord, and had no idea that the new movie of uh, the sequel of Top Gun after 34 years was going to be playing and going to be in the theater. And this was, of course, during all that stuff with the COVID issue. And so... It wasn't until 2022, I believe, that the movie Top Gun was released. However, you guys know how I am with the Lord. So I went online and I looked for a Top Gun hat. And all of a sudden, I was drawn to this one. It was, it caught me and caught my eye. And look at this, you guys. This made me emotional when I tell you. Look at this. What does it say? The, the, sound of freedom. My goodness. This Top Gun hat says the sound of freedom. I had no idea. I had no, no, I had no information. I had no idea that this absolutely was so tied to the sound of freedom, all about Tim Ballard's true story, the call of God on this man's life to go rescue so many children who are slaves to sex trafficking. My God. So we are going to dive deep tonight, but this is I was very emotional with the Lord about this because this is so profound to me. So when the Spirit of God was having me prophesy in 2021 about he was releasing his top gun, I very strongly believe this was all about this covert sting operation by the Spirit of God absolutely t connected and tied to Tim Ballard's Operation Underground Railroad. My God. Woo! So um, this is why I strongly urge, okay, those of you who have not yet gone 
And you know what? And I'm going to pray that the Lord releases finances to those of you who have not been able to uh, afford it or go to see it. Matter of fact, you can actually go on Angel Studios, I believe, .com. And I don't know if it's like hash, uh, Sound of Freedom, but people are donating so that they can actually give away free tickets to those who cannot afford it to go support this movement by watching in theaters The Sound of Freedom. Oh, man. Okay. And by the way, my gosh, this, the Lord, the Lord has been moving in such a radical way with how much that this movie has already profited, okay? The movie was, I believe they're, they're, they spent like $14 million or I think it was 14.5 or something around that ballpark. And they not only got back that money because they went through hell. They went through so much opposition. And now God is blessing them abundantly in what they're able to profit. So it goes towards... All that is happening with those who are boots on the ground, a part of this operation to rescue so many children who are tortured, who are tortured. They are literally enslaved by pedophiles, this satanic evil organ harvesting. If you haven't seen the interviews, go on. There are several YouTube videos where Jim Caviezel, praise God for this man. And by the way, I have already seen in the spirit, God has such a huge plan for Jim Caviezel. He, 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 he had him go on the journey by going into Hollywood, becoming an actor, powerful films like The Count of Monte Cristo, The Passion of Christ, and now The Sound of Freedom. But now God is using him as a mighty voice. My God, this man is absolutely preaching. He is preaching the gospel. He is preaching the gospel. He is a roaring lion that is out there and he's got a huge sphere of influence to impact so many people, to convict their hearts, to wake them up concerning everything that's been going on that is also attached to Hollywood. So tonight uh, I'm going to share several things with you. And by the way, we're going to, we're going to go, oh my God, um, we're going to do something really fun tonight. I have not done this in a long time. We're going to worship. We're going to play this song. The Holy Spirit told me, he said, I want you to play that song. We strike the ground for the wells of revival. Okay, so I'm going to play that. I want you guys to get in the flow as we begin to roar. We strike the ground for the word of the Lord is the strike zone from my throne. And the prophecy that I'm going to play, I'm actually going to uh, click on my video that I did, my broadcast in August, and I've got the clip. So you guys can hear it out of my mouth from August. I think it was aired on the 17th where I heard the Lord speak so clearly. We the people are going on strike in America. And I felt a weighty presence of God on this word because I didn't understand how serious this was going to be. And then... I don't watch the news unless the Holy Spirit leads me. And all of a sudden, God tells me about four or five days ago, he said, daughter, go on your Roku TV and I want you to click on that Fox Live. And the second I clicked on Fox Live, I see Hollywood strike, Hollywood strike, the, the Writers Guild. I see Fran from the nanny that I used to watch, um, you know, in my high school years with my family. Um, and so immediately the Lord says, I, I prophesied through you about a huge strike coming to America. And so all of a sudden, this is huge, guys, because this is happening right now. And I want to ask you, how many of you have already um, been familiar with this news happening because they made it public on July the 13th. July the 13th, I believe at midnight, is when the actors, I mean major actors, big time actors, we're talking about people that are the face of Hollywood, 
big time well-known actors, right? They are all joined in in this Hollywood strike. And I'm going to play a clip so you guys can um, hear about this as well. This is over 160,000 actors and screenwriters, all those that, that you know, are the, the basic foundation of making Hollywood their money. And um, this is huge. Hollywood is shut down, okay? So right after Sound of Freedom is released in box office on July the 4th, Independence Day, all of a sudden on July 13th, now this gets serious that literally when the actors joined the Writers Guild, all of a sudden, and they started in May, the, the screenwriters, but when the actors joined in, this thing went nationwide and basically they're shut down. So they can't produce anything. My God, they can't do anything because they're they're like if if we don't get our deal if if you don't if you don't accept um our deal then that's it we're 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 staying on strike so this is huge because it means again that they will lose millions and millions more dollars in box office it's so huge you guys and of course i think you guys know as well that the Lord had me prophesy. I made a recent post on the community page on YouTube here. And then on Facebook, I made a post and stated in 2020 that the Lord clearly roared out of my mouth and said, I will hold them accountable. They will take account. I will make them bleed from their billion dollar bank accounts. I will cause them to hemorrhage. So this is happening right before our very eyes in Disney Hollywood, we're, um, all the big time, big tech companies, right? They have been literally financially bleeding, hemorrhaging. It has been on the news. I have articles. As a matter of fact, I will be reading an article here because it's interesting. And this was actually, I think it was a few days ago. And it says, a lot of blood in the water. Why actors and writers' strikes are a big blow to Hollywood studios. Oh my goodness, a lot of blood in the water. And what was one of the plagues that God released in Egypt? He turned the water into blood. He caused the blood to, he caused the water in the river, in the Nile, to turn to blood. And so I find that interesting that this statement is made because I'm telling you, God is just getting started and he he struck their bank accounts but he's about to strike even more. Hallelujah. Okay. So, thank you Jesus. I am going to do the I think uh I wonder if I should put this my top gun hat on. Um oh glory to God. So, we're going to watch a clip, okay? And I want you guys to see I want you guys to see um, the word that I released, so you actually see that it was released a year ago. Then we're going to go into some uh, a short one-minute clip for the Hollywood strike. Then also, guys, get this. UPS. Out of nowhere, I see this with UPS. That if they don't reach... If they don't reach a negotiation, if, if, if UPS, the company, does not reach um, a, a deal with the what they call the Teamsters that are part-time UPS workers then they are literally going on strike. Their contract ends at the end of this month, July 31st, and they said this could be so detrimental to the economy. Well, guess what? It's the world's system economy, not our economy. For the remnant of the Lord, we operate from the economy of heaven, baby. So we are not impacted. And this is what you got to understand, that when they start screaming and flipping out because of how the economy is, is going to turn or bad things are going to happen in the economy. When you live by the Spirit of God, you, you operate from the economy of heaven. So it is not going to impact you because we live by the Spirit. God moves supernaturally. Hallelujah. Okay, here we go. Thank you, Jesus. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to play the worship first, okay? 
We're going to worship because God is striking. He is striking. And you know what? His intercession through us, the royal priesthood, is striking the head of the enemy, striking the ground, because there are groundbreaking movements that are breaking forth as we see what is happening, even in mainstream media, what it, what God is doing in Hollywood, what God is doing. We're also going to watch a very serious video. It is about 12 minutes long. This shows the origins of the evil of Hollywood and how it's tied to the temple of Artemis or known as Diana, this goddess Diana that they worshipped. It was all about self-worship and it was all about human sacrifice. And so we're going to watch this clip. It's going to blow your mind. But you're going to see now how the Lord is striking Hollywood because of everything that's been tied to this absolute horrendous evil $150 billion industry for child sex trafficking, organ harvesting, human trafficking, everything that's tied to the drug cartel, everything that's tied to the fentanyl that they've been using that has been killing thousands upon thousands of people in our nation. This is huge. So you're going to see uh, everything that um, you need to understand about this evil. And it's even interesting that it's in Ephesians. I think it's, is it? No, it's Acts. It's the book of Acts chapter 19. We're going to read that scripture where Paul goes, he's on his way to Macedonia and he ends up stopping in Ephesus. And Ephesus is known as uh, the people that worship the goddess Diana. And so you're going to get some really amazing information. And this is also um, another name for Jezebel. Okay. You're going to get some amazing information tonight. So we're going to dig deep and dive deep. But I'm telling you, God is striking and he's making himself no, people are seeing how the hand of God is striking the head of his enemies right now. And the Lord said, hey, we're, we're flourishing. The remnant of God is going to flourish. But you are going to see so many that are tied to the world system that absolutely do not fear the Lord. They do not obey the Lord. And so they're going to be um, attached to the basically the spiritual plagues that God is releasing right now as he's tearing down this disgusting billion dollar industry of trafficking. And by the way, I'm going to say it again. The Sound of Freedom movie is a wrecking ball through the voice of Jim Caviezel and Tim Ballard. And I can't, for, I think his name is Eduardo. He is amazing. And the one who basically produced the Sound of Freedom. He is using them as a fierce wrecking ball. And people are rising up because I'm telling you, this evil industry is going down. It is going down. Okay. So let's get to it. We are going to play We Strike the Ground for the Wells of Revival. Here we go. Make sure you guys tell me you can hear it. There's a dance that's in your children. I gotta get, I gotta do this now. Type if you can hear this, guys. I want you to, we're gonna dive in because we're going deep tonight. Bring your rain, God. Bring your rain. Here we go. Going on in the heavenlies, and we're tearing down with your principality. 
There's a war going on in the heavenlies, and we're tearing down wicked principalities. There's a war going on in the heavenlies, and we're raising up a righteousness. 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 In the heavenlies, and we're tearing down wicked principalities. Woo! She cut it out of the Baba Basic. Wicked principalities. And we're raising up a righteousness. Hallelujah. We are striking the ground. Every tongue, every tongue, strike the ground, sing the name. Every tribe, every tongue, strike the ground, bring the name. Every tongue, every tongue, strike the We're going to rescue these children. Every tribe, every tongue, strike the ground, bring the name. Every tribe, every tongue, strike the ground, bring the name. Send your name. all right his righteous rule justice and righteousness are the foundation of his throne baby okay here we go
My God. I had to actually go to the restroom real quick because my, my eyes were burning or watering. I said, not today, devil. Uh-uh. No, no, no. Okay. Hallelujah. So listen, for those of you, if you've never heard that song before, okay, if you've never heard it, I want to make sure you get it. I want to make sure you get it. You know why? Because I want you to crank that up and I want you to release your roar, okay? This right here will cause you to dance like David and unleash the roar of the lion of the tribe of Judah, all right? So that song, I want to give you the name, okay? Thank you, Jesus. That song, it's titled Azusa Now, and it says, strike the ground, okay? You can actually type strike the ground, and it says featuring Michael Kettle, okay? So if you need to write that down, I want you to write that down because I want you, if you got put your earbuds on, I'm telling you, and let the Holy Spirit begin to stir in you like a volcano that's about to erupt. I'm telling you what, when you listen to this and you get in the secret place with the Spirit of God, you begin to release some serious tongues of fire. My goodness. So, and, and I'm telling you, whatever battle you might be going through, when you put that on and you understand what it means to strike the ground with the authority of the word of the Lord, okay? Striking the ground is decreeing the word of the Lord, God's decree over a nation, God's decree over a situation. And we begin to govern the atmosphere with the decree of the Lord. We get to steward that thing. We say, uh-uh, we're not backing down. We're not sitting down. We're not moved, okay? We're not moved. We are moved by the spirit of God. That's what moves us. The spirit of God, the word of God, the manifestation of the spirit of God, the glory of God. But we're not moved. We're going to stand here on a solid foundation. He is the rock on which I stand. And I will not be moved. I will roar. I will partner with the decree of heaven. Woo! Okay. Jesus. All right. So we are going. Wow. Glory to God. So I got to encourage you guys again. You got to put that on. And I'm telling you. Worship the Lord. It'll take you to such a deeper, a, a deeper place of even worship, a deeper place where you begin to, you begin to take hold of the roar of God that's inside of you. Man, some of you, I'm just going to decree this right now in the name of Jesus, that I don't care whatever situation you're going through, that you're going to literally discover a deeper depth of the authority of Christ within you. My God, the roar of the lion that is in your belly. You are going to dive to a deeper place of authority. You're going to discover it tangibly when them tongues of fire become released in a greater depth it's going to cause you to shake in the presence of God not listen to shake because you feel the holy fear of God you feel the authority of the spirit of God and not only do you feel the authority of God within you you can discern the demonic realm that is literally quivering because they see now how you move how you partner with the spirit of God how you are in agreement with heaven. Woo! Man, I feel the spirit of God. I just, just decree this over those of you that are on this broadcast right now that you're about to step into a deeper depth and a deeper dive of authority in Christ. Your authority in Christ. When you surrender to the king, my God, when you surrender to the king and when you get in the ring, it ain't you that's throwing the punches, baby. It's the heavyweight champion that that already overcame the world. Woo! Man, I'm fired up right now. Let me say it again. I just, whoever needs this, 
It is not you. See, the moment you surrender to the king, when you get in the ring, it's not you throwing the punches. It is the spirit of God, the heavyweight champion that already overcame the world, already took the keys from hell in the grave, already made the demonic his prisoner on public display. Woo! So, Father, I thank you right now. I thank you right now tonight that you begin to tangibly pour out your spirit and begin to open up their belly and where their spirit man abides with you, that you begin to take them to a deeper place of experiencing the way you roar. Because his roar will open up the right door. His roar will tear down. He will, will break the dam. The demonic dam, baby. His roar will break the demonic dam. His roar will tear down strongholds. His roar will cause you to see Jesus as a lion that begins to rip the flesh of his enemy. He begins to rip apart the enemy in the spiritual realm like a lion that begins to start devouring the flesh of his prey. My God. Woo! Okay. So, here's what we're doing. The first thing we're going to do... <laughs> the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to play... I want to play this prophecy that the Lord had me release on a broadcast... August, I believe it was the 17th of 2022, where I heard the Lord, okay? And what I'm going to explain to you is this. God woke me up at 4.05 or 4.07 in the morning. And in August, okay, and it was probably, I think it was the, yeah, it was the 16th at 4.06 or 4.07 a.m. And I woke up to literally hearing and seeing a cobra, a king cobra like this going, like uh, like the hissing or the, the way that you hear the sound of a cobra, they put their hood out before they're about to strike, okay? And, and I am hearing this and I'm seeing this giant king cobra weaving like this, okay? And all of a sudden, I hear the Spirit of God and he said, that's not the enemy, daughter, that's me. And I'm about to strike the enemy. I'm about to strike the enemy. Okay. And I want to say something to you guys right now because I just got this revelation from the Spirit of God. See, the Lord says in His Word, be gentle as a dove, but wise as a serpent. And when I talk to you about the cobra that is that it, it's it's got its hood out when it's about to strike. Well, I'm about to say to you the royal priesthood, the way that you're about to strike the enemy with the authority of Christ, like a cobra that rears its hood out and begins to position itself to strike its enemy and to strike it with a deadly blow. Oh my God. And so the priesthood is the be gentle as a dove, but wise as a serpent. See, when God created the cobra, it created the cobra with wisdom and intelligence, a divine intelligence to know how to take its prey, to know the second that it's supposed to strike. Woo! Man, oh, rambaba sendi andararabarosoto. So see, God wants to move here and tell you that his priesthood, his royal priesthood is about to strike the enemy in intercession like the cobra that strikes its prey. Woo! At the right time. At the right time. My goodness. And so going back to this moment, God's speaking to me and he brings me to the moment where he tells Moses and Aaron, right? And it's actually Aaron's rod. And he says, tell Aaron to throw down his staff. Because what was the staff of Aaron? It was the priesthood. My God, here it is. Aaron's staff represented the priesthood. He said to Moses, tell Aaron to throw down his staff. 
and I will cause that staff to turn into a serpent and devour that which came out of the sorcery, the warlocks, the witches. I will devour what they brought forth out of trickery and illusions and fear. And so the moment happened when all of a sudden that Aaron obeyed the Lord. He threw down his staff, which represented his authority in his priesthood, in covenant with the Holy One of Israel. And all of a sudden, it turns into that cobra. And it devours the serpents from the sorcerers. Glory to God. Okay, so this is where God was speaking to me. And then I hear several things about how he's going to strike. I saw a vision. Some of you remember when I saw, I saw a vision like a sledgehammer striking the ground and oil coming forth. And I saw the Beverly Hillbillies. And God said, the reason I showed you the Beverly Hillbillies is because they were poor. And the moment they struck oil, they became so wealthy. My God. And the Lord said, my people are about to strike oil. And he's talking about what's coming out of heaven. The greatest wisdom to create wealth. The outpouring of true kingdom strategy. My God. To begin to step into a wealthy place. To have the finances to begin to establish what God has called you to. When he gave you the vision and the blueprint from heaven. Woo! But then there was the other strike. And here we go. Thank you, Jesus. Here was the other strike. I'm fixing to open it up right now. Hallelujah. Okay. I'm going to share the screen. I'm, man, I feel the spirit of God. I'm so excited. Woo! Okay. Here we go. I'm going to share this screen. Okay. And I'm going to play this. Hold on one second, guys. I'm going to play this. This is literally from August the 17th of 2022, so you can hear this. And I'm, I'm hearing the umpire, right? Strike three. You're out of here. And I mean, there is such a move of the Spirit coming forth for the people of God. We're going to see sudden victories where we literally fell into a trap of hopelessness. We, we were falling into things where the enemy was trying so hard to get us to give up those who drank from his cup of suffering for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of the, the perfect will of the Father, for thy kingdom to come and thy will to be done. But God is saying, I'm going to strike the head of your enemy, and I'm going to not just strike your enemy. I'm going to devour your enemy. I'm going to devour your enemy and that enemy will be no more. Okay, here we go. Ooh, Jesus. Then I heard the final strike. I hear we are going on a strike. We the people in our nation, America. Okay. Some of you might totally get revelation in that when, when the Lord's speaking to me, where I'm literally hearing it. We're going on strike. We the people of the United States of America, we are going on a strike. Like when a people that works for a company, right? And I think they work for the union or something. And something is, they're, they're not being treated right. They're not being paid fair, right? What do they do? They go on a strike. When they go on a strike, the company, they what because all the employees are coming together. They're coming together. If they don't have any employees, they can't make money. They can't produce. And so there's a strike. And I'm telling you, something is up with what I heard. We are going on strike. Okay, because God said, I'm telling you, when I see this massive king cobra swaying like this. Be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. And here's the Lord. This snake, this king, King Cobra, represents the Lord, okay? And he's doing this. And all of a sudden, he says, I am about to strike. Can you guys really feel that weight of his presence in this word? I'm telling you, 
He's about to strike, and it's it's a vicious strike to devour his enemy. I mean, this is when, I mean, he's going to devour that moment. I'm going to take you to Exodus chapter 7. That's okay, it. I think that's Exodus it. Here we go. Exodus chapter 7. Hold on. Okay, we're going to pause. We're going to stop that one. Okay, so I wanted you guys to hear this. This is literally the word of the Lord that the Lord had me prophesy hearing we the people were going on a strike. This was going to, this was, and I felt the weight of it, but I had no idea what the Lord was, was, was actually um, saying in that situation. But I knew it had to do with workers in the union and a, a big strike. And now I'm going to show you the clips right now. Here we go. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to stop that and we're going to go ahead and pull up the Hollywood strike here. And then after the Hollywood strike, we're going to play this clip that is all about the evil in Hollywood and how it's connected to this satanic temple. Okay. All right, here we go. And I want you guys to see this. Negotiations began on June 7th. We've tried for four weeks to reach a deal with the AMP. There's Fran. And unfortunately, they have left us with no alternative. Because of this, our negotiating committee voted to go on strike. Oh. And then earlier this morning, the sag after national board convened and unanimously voted to issue a strike order against the studios and streamers. The strike will begin at midnight tonight and all of us, union members, leadership, and staff, will be out on the picket lines tomorrow morning. That was Ju July 13th. Day one, we kick it off, and we'll be here as long as it takes. Sag after strong! Sag after strong! This is what I do for a living. This is my career. This is my life. This is what pays the bills. Yeah, we're full-time actors, and this is what we do. This is what you get when you get uh, studios not respecting actors and writers. We came there expecting to make a deal, you know, in good faith. And what we found across the table were people who were unreasonable, who told us that we were uncivilized for wanting to advocate and be paid for what we justly deserve. No. The disrespect ran rampant throughout this negotiation. There was a callousness with the way they talked about young people, the way they talked about the background community, the way they talked about us as labor. We have core issues here which they did not address in any meaningful way. All we want is a fair deal. All strike, shut it down. LA is a union town. What is so amazing to me about the entertainment industry is that we are one of the most union dense industries in the country and that this moment is possible because of organized labor. It's a movement in this country. It's not just this industry. It is a labor movement. Big business corporations are trying to squeeze labor out of their due and it's not going to go away. It's going to get worse unless we stop it right here and now. You can't on the one hand, brag about your 100 millionth subscriber and then go, oh, but we really can't give you, you know, a very modest pay increase. Just doesn't work. The entire business model has been changed by streaming, digital, AI. This is a moment of history that is a moment of truth. If we don't stand tall right now, we are all going to be in trouble. We are all going to be in jeopardy of being replaced by machines. And big business, who cares more about Wall Street than you and your family? They could give us everything we wanted and it wouldn't hurt them. You cannot change the business model as much as it has changed and not expect the contract to change too. They put in front of us that they want to be able to scan a background performer, pay him 200 bucks, and then use that scan into perpetuity. We can't sign off on things like that. Corporate green has got to go. Hey, hey. We are going to support the journeyman actor, the person who is fighting to have 
a middle class life, you know, you see the glitz and glamour and the red carpets and Hollywood, and that is a minuscule sliver of what this profession actually is. When I go to set, it is a blue collar, working class profession. We are labor and we stand tall and we demand respect and to be honored for our contribution. You share the wealth because you cannot exist without us. There we go, guys. Okay. So I wanted to, I wanted to share that with you because again, this Hollywood strike, remember, now we're going to get into something deep, okay? Because I'm going to play something that I believe in, even they tried to censor. This was uploaded a few years ago. God led me to this when he had spoke to me about the no more Achilles heel in the heart of this nation, America, and how that was tied to the pedophilia rings and how God gave me that name, James Achilles Oliphantes, who was the owner of Comet Pizza, who was tied to Epstein, Hillary Clinton, all of these different people that would go to his pizza restaurant. There were a lot of different um, resourceful information about um, the, the child pornography and the trafficking and how he was a big part of that. And so this is huge guys. And so God had actually led me to this video a few years back and, and I asked the Lord to help me find it. And by God, I found it. And it is important that you watch this because the reason I wanted to show you the strike this has not happened in Hollywood for about 65 years. The last time this happened in Hollywood was with Reagan. Before Ronald Reagan was president, he was actually, I believe, the president of the, the Writers Guild or with the actors in Hollywood because, remember, he was a Hollywood actor before he became president. So the last time a huge historical strike has ever taken place it has not happened since Ronald Reagan. And that was in, in the 60s, the 1960s. So this is very huge. This is historical. And God is saying, again, I'm making them hemorrhage from their bank accounts. He is literally causing all of this. So there's this literal strike that is happening. But what you have to understand is it goes beyond these actors and writers. They've been influenced by the Spirit of God. This whole thing that's happening is because of the Spirit of God that is literally making these billion dollar elite people. And again, that's with Disney. That's with... Um, that's with even with Netflix and there there's a lot of these people but with Hollywood like Hollywood's like the main source and then it's like you see this this web right attached to all these other companies and so they are literally hemorrhaging and I could not believe that I saw that Disney all their movies that they released since they joined the woke movement all their movies flopped, you guys, and they have lost a total of $4.5 billion. $4.5 billion. And it, oh my God, for, from, from the time they stepped out to release everything with Buzz, uh, Buzz Lightyear from the Toy Story to, to make him gay and, you know, all the stuff that they've been doing, God is showing his hand to say, you are not you are not going to mess with my creation. You are not going to, to groom a people. You're not going to win in your, in your agenda, your evil agenda. But what I'm first going to do is I'm going to strike your bank accounts. Okay? So you can see it. Type in Disney. It shows they've lost already $900 million dollars. And it has to deal, I mean, in box office, but a total from all these past movies, they have failed. They have lost over two point something million subscribers on Disney Plus ever since they thought they could just get away with, you know, um, expo like basically showing their the reality of who they are and what they represent. And so they are literally going down the drain. They're bleeding. They're hemorrhaging financially. 
So it's very important, okay, that again, that I show you this important video. Please do me a favor. I want to wait a few minutes, okay? I want you guys to go get other people. Start tagging other people. I'm going to wait just a few minutes because I want to make sure the, the, the remnant sees this video. You guys, please make sure that you share this. Not because of me, but because of the message. Because of knowledge. God says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. So I'm going to ask you again, take a few moments. If you're on Facebook, start tagging some other prayer warriors to get on because I'm going to play this 12-minute serious video. And for those of you on YouTube, just just message or t uh, you know type in someone's name or however you can do it. Just get other people to join in because this is a very serious documentary. It's a very serious clip and it is unreal, okay, when you see this, this information because... The original, the, the actual hit, the name Hollywood comes from the actual name Hollywood. And, and you guys, some of these people in Christian in, in Christianity didn't even know what they were saying when they said, oh, we want Hollywood to change to Hollywood. When actually the evil origin of Hollywood is actually from Rome and it was called Holy Wood. H-O-L-Y-W-O-O-D. You're going to see in this documentary um, because even the word holy, they use that word holy in their satanic temples, believe it or not. Okay? So that's why you got to have discernment. you got to have serious discernment from the Holy Spirit. Because I don't care if someone says the word holy. Uh, they say that in satanic temples. All right, here we go, guys. This is serious. Thank you, Jesus. Sunday. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and share this. We're going to pull it up. It's important you guys watch this. Okay. All right. I'm going to wait, give you guys just a few more moments. Okay. I want to wait just a few more moments and then we're going to get started. But I want to give you guys an opportunity because this Hollywood strike that's going on right now, what is happening that's literally there they can't they can't do anything. They can't produce anything. There's no writers. They can't um they can't um film anything. Like Hollywood is literally shut down right now. This is how serious this is while we're waiting to get people on here. Here's the article. I will post this article in the community page and I will post this article on Facebook after this broadcast. It is from Los Angeles Times. A lot of blood in the water. Why actors and writers strikes are a big blow to Hollywood studios. Hollywood top executives figured they could ride out a skirmish with screenwriters reeling from technology's changes to the industry. And it says here, the Saga Sog Aftra, which represents 160,000 actors and other performers. After talks over a new contract collapsed last week, it says throngs of performers joined writers on picket lines. Okay, this is serious. And then it goes into, oh, here we go. It says, there's going to be a lot of blood in the water. Jonathan Taplin, director emeritus of USC's Annenberg Innovation Lab said, this is not going to end well. Okay, and then it says, simultaneous strikes by the Writers Guild of America and the Screen Actors Guild American Federation of Television and Radio Artists, the first joint work stoppage since Ronald Reagan led SAG in 1960, couldn't come at the worst time for traditional entertainment companies. Their businesses haven't fully recovered from pandemic shutdowns. Walt Disney Company, Paramount Global, and Warner Brothers Discovery have been grappling with heavy debt loads due to mergers and also from ordering dozens of shows to ramp up their streaming services. Okay, it goes on and on, but I want you guys to hear that what's highlighted is the statement, the statement that is so serious. Again, this has not happened since Ronald Reagan, before he became president of our nation, when he led the SAG, which you, which I just said, the name of it, SAG after or something like this, okay? And it says again, there's going to be a lot of blood in the water. 
That is such a, that is such an Egypt moment in the Bible when God turns the water into blood. The plague. God, she, okay, here we go. Here's why that statement was released. And again, God is causing them to hemorrhage. Hemorrhage from their bank accounts. Here we go. All right. Hello, everyone. I'm taking a walk today in the Hollywood Hills. Pay attention, Am guys. I'm in the United States of America. I hear you ask. No, I'm just on the outskirts of Rome. These are the Hollywood Hills. No joke. This place is called Nemi, which in Latin is Nemus. Or the Holy Wood. You see how all the trees in the hills are very, very ironically similar to the United States Hollywood in California. I think you could pretty much just insert the American Hollywood sign right in the middle of that grove and it wouldn't look much different to what we see on television. Uh, also that lake right in the center that's called Diana's Mirror, which emperors used to sail into to assert themselves as stars. <laughs> you would not believe just how many roads lead to Rome. Rome. The lake was called Diana's Mirror. Mirror. Keep that in mind. Holy wood, a, a hub of violent witchcraft in Rome. Violent witchcraft was done in this temple. It really makes you think. I mean, the whole thing is a bit like a net, isn't it? It's like a trap. It's a snare that they would sail into these waters and then, unbeknown to them, uh, they're actually being sort of lured in by its beauty and they were to be sacrificed in the temple of Diana. Sounds a little familiar, doesn't it? With uh, the Hollywood of today, that it kind of lures us in with its impressiveness and its beauty and that really it's uh, Jezebel's net Jezebel's net uh, and people are being sacrificed into it people give their all to be in it and people get brainwashed by it and they lose themselves to it my god and people sacrifice so much, so much of their time, so much of their life to Hollywood. It's exactly the same thing. The amount, the sheer amount that Hollywood and the mainstream media have changed people, have distracted people, have changed their lives, have made people more self-engrossed, encouraged self-worship. They have it's amazing how much television has changed this world, has changed so many cultures and corrupted so many cultures across the whole world. All from that one place. The fallen casting angels. Casting a spell over the viewers. of Apollo. Wow, there's something there. Temple of Diana in Rome. Spitting image of Hollywood on the hill. This evidence suggests I'm Nimi sure enough, used... just off the coast of wow. the water, the Temple of Diana where they used to sacrifice the people that came into this water. So it's clear that the mother goddess worship 
was very prevalent in this area. The holy wood, the worship of the huntress. You can see um, the bow and arrow symbolism everywhere. But no telling what people used to do here. They quite literally used to sacrifice those people in this temple of Diana. Of course, this is thousands of years old now. You can vividly picture really how evil this pagan worship actually is. It's absolutely satanic. Look at the fruits of it. Now, still, this is the mistake that some make. They think that this has all completely vanished and this, this doesn't happen anymore. Well, the Luciferians, they are pantheistic. They worship many gods and it, there's nothing new under the sun. This old age of gods and goddess worship is still the new age. Religion is still part of the same thing. It's, it's not disappeared at all. We've been very blessed that Christian values spread across this world. Uh, but you can see where it will end up when if people fall away from true biblical Christian values of love and loving one another and loving Jesus and loving your neighbor and do not murder. You know, you can, you can see where the world will go. It's not evolving, is it? It's devolving back into the old age lies, but they're just calling it new. So it can't be good when you look back at the past and see that this is still part of the same Luciferian religion. It can't be going anywhere good, can it? Because look at what used to happen. Do, do we want that again? If you go down to the All satanic. <laughs> They're not going to show anything. They're just showing this. What they use in a movie here. Look at this. Diana's you know, mirror. You know, it's pretty interesting, isn't it, that this place is called Diana's Mirror. When Hollywood oh. is all about look at that self obsession, uh, self worship. My God, it's very interesting. You can see the same fruits in Hollywood today, Hollywood today, as we walk around this place, which is called Nemi, which in Latin means holy wood, Diana and her holy wood. The lake is called Diana's Mirror. My God. So really, when you think about it, Hollywood is just an extension, uh, an artificial plastic version of what is already here. It's just a modern day replica of what is already on the outskirts of Rome. All roads lead to Rome. Look at that with the Vatican. So really the one in the United States is like a pseudo uh, modern mock-up version uh, of channeling the same thing, the worship and cult of Diana. Look at that. That the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised and her magnificence should be destroyed whom all Asia and the world worshipeth. And when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Wow. I'm making my way up to the town of Nemi itself. Notice the male-female symbolism. Male-female. Sex female. magic of the gate right in the center of the town wow look at the top the moon goddess a crescent moon with a crown so obvious oh boy 
The foundation of the shrine is clearly the Vatican. The Jesuit Illuminati secret societies, guys. There it is, the sculpture of Diana, the Huntress. Remember also the symbolism we've looked into before with the wild hunt. The European folklore of Europa, you know, the goddess, uh, the wild hunt. Nimrod was the first one to bring together a coordinated effort of all mankind to come against the truth of the revealed word of God. Nimrod, the Bible said, was a hunter for souls. My friend, he was a hunter before the Lord. And what he hunted was not deer and elk. He was hunting the souls of men. And how ultimately it refers to the hunting of Christians. And how Hollywood is being used as propaganda to gear, you know, to prepare the world for that. To prepare the world. And to undermine the Bible and anti-Christian media. So this is all linking to the wild hunt. Um, and actually the folklore, European folklore of the wild hunt, it comes from another dimension. Does that not tell you where the entertainment is coming from? Whose agenda is being pushed through the mainstream media? Look at this. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? My goodness. There it is, guys. Whew! Okay. Here we go. All right. Okay. So... Now, if you want to comment, I want you guys to comment because what really struck me, okay, we're going to go back over this and then we're going to go into Acts chapter 19 where I was really amazed, okay, because it is literally in scripture. This is the New Testament where Paul the Apostle is on his way, Macedonia, and it shows where, you know, he's on a journey with the Lord and he's baptizing the disciples in those areas because they were only baptized with water by John the Baptist. So they didn't yet receive the baptism by fire of the Holy Spirit to actually become the body of Christ, right? To go out and preach the gospel with the Holy Spirit. And so on his way, as he's baptizing, there's something that happens and it's in scripture, and we're going to read this because what I'm showing you is literally in the word of God. What he, the documentary about this goddess Diana, which we know this is about the fallen angels, right? But this is in scripture, and we've got to educate ourselves. So we're going to go into that. But what I was really floored by is when he shows the the Disney movie Snow White with the wicked stepmother who is always looking in the mirror. And the whole thing about this satanic temple and worshiping this goddess Diana was called the Lake Nemi, okay, was called Diana's Mirror, which this is all Holly and, and, and again her name Diana and it's Nemi and it's like a there's a long name and I'll go into that but it's short her last name is Nemi Diana Nemi Nemi means holy wood holy wood and this was established in Rome 
And this is connected to the Vatican. My God. And I mean, think about this. And what they did was they lured people in. So the people were, the demonic was luring these sailors on these ships in. And they would be sacrificed, humanly sacrificed to this evil entity. Okay. And they had, it was all about sex. It was all about vanity. And listen, in Hollywood, it's all about self-worship. So it's like, it's true about the selfies. It's getting people to look at themselves, to want to, you know, change themselves, change their DNA. Come on, transgender, change everything. And this is massive. So we're, but also they have the evil that they do, the way that they do their rituals with sexual orgies and home, like pedophile, all this stuff is tied to this evil. And this is literally found in the city of Ephesus when Paul is traveling and we're going to read it, but my goodness, to see that the, the, the wicked stepmother. And she says, mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? Does that not sound like Lucifer? Who wants, he was adorned. He was adorned with sapphire and ruby, with all these instruments to usher in the angels of the Lord into the presence of the great I am. So God made Lucifer so unbelievably beautiful. So that's exactly what he wants. He wants it to be about vanity and self worship so that he can take your soul. Okay, let's. Let's dive in, guys. We're going to, I'm going to go to, um, because this is just amazing to me. Acts chapter 19. We're going to go into, uh, I think, verse 23. And under the headline, it says, the, the riot in Ephesus. About that time, there arose a great disturbance about the way. A silversmith named Demetrius, who made silver shrines of Artemis, which is another thing about Diana. Okay, so Artemis brought in a lot of business for the craftsmen there. He called them together along with the workers in related trades and said, you know, my friends, that we receive a good income from this business. Oh my God, there it is. You know, my friends, we receive a good income from this business. What was their business? Making the shrines. Look, it says above, this making, where is it at? Okay, I don't want to get ahead of myself. He was a craftsman that was making silver shrines, meaning idols. It was idol worship. Making these to what? To worship the goddess of Diana. And we're going we're gonna to go into that in a minute. But the key thing here is he says, you know, my friends, that we receive a good income from this business. So now you look at this satanic temple, this evil worship, and how they were, you know, the, the whole aspect of how, how Satan began to influence them to create this type of business, right? So that what? They can make profit and they can lure people in so that they, they begin to sacrifice their souls. Now, the, some, so many of these people are literally physically, literally sacrificed, like a blood sacrifice. Then there are thousands that literally you hear... Um, even on YouTube where you hear these actors say, yeah, I literally gave my soul to Satan. I just gave my soul to Satan for, for um, you know, for money and fame. All right. So look at it again in, in Acts chapter 19, verse 25. This, this um, what do you call him? Craftsman. He says again, he called them together along with the workers in related trades and said, you know, my friends, we receive a good income from this business. And you see and hear how this fellow Paul has convinced and led astray large numbers of people here in Ephesus and in practically the whole province of Asia. He says that gods made by human hands are no gods at all. There is danger not only that our trade will lose its good name, but also that the temple of the great goddess, and again, in some translations, it says Artemis or Diana, will be discredited. And the goddess, her, okay, here it is. Let me go back, I apologize. But also that the temple of the great goddess Artemis will be discredited and the goddess herself, 
who is worshipped throughout the province of Asia and the world, will be robbed of her divine majesty. Verse 28, when they heard this, they were furious and began shouting, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians, or great is Diana of Ephesians. So the whole city was in an uproar. The people seized these two that were traveling with Paul as disciples, as compa traveling companions from Macedonia, and all of them rushed into the theater. This is crazy. It says they rushed into the theater. Isn't that interesting? Box office. They rushed into the theater together. Paul wanted to appear before the crowd, but the disciples would not let him. Even some of the officials of the province, friends of Paul, sent him a message begging him not to venture into the theater. This is wild. This is Acts chapter 19. This is in the Bible that they're talking about the theater in Ephesus. And what is Hollywood? It's actually Holy wood, which is connected to this deity, this fallen angel, this demonic deity. And it was it's all about fame. It's all about looking at yourself in the mirror. Who's the fairest of them all? Who's the most beautiful of them all? Who's the most rich of them all? My God. So, okay, I want to read on. <laughs> wow. Wow. All right. My goodness. Okay. So verse 31, even some of the officials of the province, friends of Paul, sent him a message begging him not to venture into the theater. Oh yeah. Uh, we as the remnant, we're taking over the theaters. Okay. We're venturing. Yes, we are. We're taking it. We're going to take, we're going to take this, this industry. Yes, we are. Because we know that it's tentacles. God said, I'm going to cut the arteries of their arsenal. I'm going to cut the arteries of their arsenal. Oh, and that's what God's doing. He's cutting it all right. By the way that the strike is happening, by the way that they're hemorrhaging in their bank accounts. Oh, he's dealing with their businesses all right. With their evil agenda to what? Worship Satan. Okay. Verse 32. The assembly was in confusion. Some were shouting one thing, some another. Most of the people did not even know why they were there. The Jews in the crowd pushed Alexander to the front and they shouted instructions to him. He motioned for silence in order to make a defense before the people. But when they realized he was a Jew, they all shouted in unison for about two hours, Great is Diana of Ephesus. Okay? Some translations again you got to look at all translations it says great as artemis of the ephesians this is literally all about this satanic temple so this was this is dealing with rome this is dealing with those who literally worship this entity okay isn't this crazy so i want to make sure you guys get the knowledge okay because you got it now you got it here's the here's the documentary telling you that in rome that it was the landscape is the spitting image of Los Angeles, Hollywood, the whole design, everything. It, it literally is, is all coming out of that demonic entity. Okay. And it's right here. Okay. It's right here. Paul, the apostle faced this and I, I just, I'm blown away. Are you guys not blown away that it talks about the theater it literally says it twice. I'm going to go back to that. But my goodness, they're talking about the theater. <laughs> the industry. Business. Wow. Okay, and it says, verse 35, The city clerk quieted the crowd and said, Fellow Ephesians, doesn't all the world know that the city of Ephesus is the guardian of the temple of the great Diana and of her image, which fell from heaven? Oh, did you hear that? Let me read that again. For those of you that might be just joining, this is, I'm reading from the book of Acts chapter 19 and I'm reading at verse 35. The city clerk quieted the crowd and said, fellow Ephesians, doesn't, or, and it says, doesn't all the world know that the city of Ephesus is the guardian of the temple of the great Diana or Artemis and of her image which fell from heaven. My God. Okay, this is real all about Satan. 
I saw Satan fall like lightning. Uh-huh. Okay. Of course, again, all those fallen angels. Therefore, since these facts are undeniable, you ought to calm down and not do anything rash. You have brought these men here, though they have neither robbed temples nor blasphemed our goddess. If then Demetrius and his fellow craftsmen have a grievance against anybody, the courts are open and there are, I think it says proconsuls. They can press charges. If there is anything further you want to bring up, it must be settled in a legal assembly. Oh, a lot of things are going to be settled in a legal assembly. Uh, they're already being settled from the courts of heaven, baby. And a lot of things are going to be brought into the Supreme Court. A lot of stuff is going. Look at all the lawsuits that are happening. Look, look at all the stuff that's happening. God is using the employees and other people. There are good people that work in Hollywood. Not all are evil. And by the way, did you guys notice on the documentary, the I forgot his name, he plays on the movie Rudy, right? The He plays the actor who, who, who plays about a true story about Rudy and Notre Dame. And then he was actually the childhood actor for Goonies. Uh, that was my childhood movie. So you saw the documentary, right, with the, the Hollywood strike. He was one of them that was basically kind of yelling saying, you know, they need to give money uh, through those streams and on all the, the subscriptions they got, and they're not giving us hardly anything. Okay, so that was that was that man, okay? And there were a lot of familiar faces you guys probably saw on there. All right, so, whoo! Okay, if there is anything further you want to bring up, it must be settled in a legal assembly. As it is, we are in danger of being charged. Oh, we are in danger of being charged. Oh, yes, yes, Hollywood, you are. Okay, um, with rioting because of what happened today, in that case, we would not be able to account for this commotion since there is no reason of it. After he said this, he dismissed the assembly. Okay, so I was reading in Acts chapter 19, and I was reading starting at verse 23, I believe it is, where it talks about the riot in Ephesus. Again, this is the landscape. It's in Rome, okay? It's called Ephesus, but this is where they were all those who worshipped this goddess, this demonic entity, okay? And again, in the documentary, you notice that it she, that this goddess or this demonic entity is known as the principality called Jezebel. Not a person, not some no, a principality. This is something really evil, Okay, all right, so now what I want to do, thank you, Jesus, is I want to go to, I think I did all of this, right? I did the prophecy. So this is a fulfillment of prophecy from a year ago. That was quick, the way God is causing all these strikes. Now what I want to do, I want to play this so you guys see the UPS. You're going to see that if they don't get the offer, if, if the UPS doesn't do a, a good negotiation with these Teamsters that have been working part-time for years but being underpaid, if there, doesn't, if there isn't a resolution, these almost three, I think it's three, 340,000 of these Teamsters, part-time workers that are a part of the union that work for, UP, work for UPS, they're going to go on strike if there is not a resolution by the end of July 31st. All right, so I want you guys to see this because again, there and you can see this year there has been a lot of people that are stepping out and these unions are causing these workers to go on strike. It's just wild to me. Okay. So we're going to do the UPS thing and then we're going to go into scripture and I'm going to read some powerful scripture about how the Lord strikes the ground. How God speaks and says, I will strike the head of my enemy. Whoo! My God, there's a lot of striking going on. There is the top gun, okay, the air force of heaven, the angel army that is being commanded by the king of the angel army to strike the head of his enemy, of his enemies.
Woo! Bringing the deep state to their knees. He said, I'm going to bring the deep state to their knees. I'm going to storm in like a swarm of bees. And the victory will be oh so sweet for my people. For I said, I am sweeter than honey from a honeycomb. Woo! Okay, here we go. Let me uh, share this screen. We're going to do the UPS one. And this is the last uh, uh, clip that we're going to be doing. And here we go. Here we go. This is a short one. And... Yeah, got in the way about a half hour ago. And this morning, some of the Teamsters members, those UPS drivers and package handlers, have been joined by... Look at them all! sag after uh, members and also members of the WGA. Hundreds of people out here in downtown LA at the UPS Strike. headquarters. UPS workers have been without a contract and talks broke down back in July uh, the 5th. And if they don't reach an agreement by July 31st, First, the majority of the membership has authorized a contract, and 340,000 workers could walk off the job. Over the past couple of days, the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about the implications of the WGA and the SAG after strike. We're talking about upwards of $2 billion, even more. Well, this could have national implications because UPS controls uh, and operates some a quarter of all the commerce in the United States, and that could effectively really shut it down. The UPS does have a contingency plan. In fact, UPS has already said it's training some of its non-union workers to handle some of those backlit packages. But now UPS airline workers have said they will not cross the picket lines and they will be they will show solidarity with the UPS drivers and the UPS uh, cargo handlers. So we'll be out here out this morning again. The clock is ticking just 12 days away when UPS workers could walk off the job. We're talking about 340,000 workers and that could have a devastating impact on the national economy. Okay, wow, there it is. All right, so I wanted you guys to see this because I was just as, I mean, I am just, I'm amazed. I'm amazed right now at what is happening because I heard it so clear in my spirit from the Lord. I heard, we the people are going on strike in the nation of America. And so, the, this huge strike that's happened in Hollywood, this is huge. Look at over 160,000 actors and screenwriters. They can't, they can't do nothing without them, and they're all shut down right now. You can research this. They are all literally shut down. Hollywood right now is shut down because of this strike, and if they don't come up, I mean, they're going to they're gonna continue. Some people have said it, it may go all the way to the rest of this year, that and they're not going to budge. They are not budging because they are literally standing up and basically saying, and you know, God is allowing this again because what? It's affecting these billionaires and their pockets. It, they're, get, they're bleeding. I'm telling you, they are hemorrhaging financially. God is doing this. That's the first strike that's taking place. And it happens to be through this strike, but also in, and it said it will affect box office like big time. They're going to continue to lose millions, okay? While Sound of Freedom is gaining millions. I mean, they're over 85. They profited. Let me look online right now because I want to see this. I want to see how much now Sound of Freedom has made in the box office. Okay, here we go. Oh my gosh, praise God. Okay, this was 10 hours ago. You guys listen to this. Okay, hold on. How much? Here it is. Wow, 100 million. Okay, the faith based. Now they say political thriller is from Angel Studios, which also produces The Chosen. And it says <laughs> Sleeper Hit Sound of Freedom has crossed the 100 million mark at the domestic box office in a little over two weeks. Now listen, Sound of Freedom has not been played in all the theaters like all these other box office movies, right? With with the Indiana Jones and, and, and uh, what do you call it? Mission Impossible. All of these, okay, they're in thousands of theaters all over. 
sound of freedom is like a David facing Goliath. And they were only in like, they were only allowed in 2,000 plus theaters and then opened up 300 more or something like this. And look at this. They have grossed over $100 million. They only had to pay 14.5, I think, million, right, for the to produce the movie where Indiana Jones was like over 350 million. These other ones, well up there. And look at God causing the sound of freedom. That's right. Because you know what? These spiritual top gun, okay? Tim Ballard, he's a top gun, baby, okay? He's he's one of God's top gun. And and so they are literally they are increasing their profits and it is it is it is causing these pedophiles these evil luciferians to shake in their damn boots okay they are shaking in their damn boots you i said it right because the horrendous evil that they thought they could get away with oh my goodness god is taking their money he is going to tear down this flipping evil billion dollar industry okay and I, I i say it i'm i'm like listen i'm like president donald j trump i am hot, i'm a thoroughbred okay i am a hot-blooded woman meaning it's righteous indignation okay so i will address the demonic realm and say those bastards the demonic realm i'm not speaking hate to the people but those who choose those who know what they're doing is wrong, but they choose to do it and they partner with the demonic and they, they choose it because they want power and they want money. You know what? You bet your, you, you bet I will say it. I will say it just like Jim Caviezel, those bastards. Okay. They're not going to get away with this. God is gutting this stuff out and he is unleashing Really, his top gun, I would say, is his Jehu's, okay? Like Jehu, when he said to the eunuch, throw Jezebel down, okay? And I'm going to do a whole other broadcast, and that broadcast, I'm going to be uploading uh, when it's going to air, when, when I'm going to go live. It's called, You Will Trample With My Mantle. That word trample is a violent... Whew, a violent subduing of the enemy, okay? We are going to trample with God's mantle upon our lives, which is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And what happened, you guys, is this is wild. You guys remember when God told me to that I heard that song? The dog days are over. The horses are coming. Can you hear the horses? Because here they come. This is blowing my mind. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. So after I released that word, my friend who is a powerful intercessor, okay, she says to me, she pulls up a post from Nate Johnson. I love Nate Johnson. One of these days, I'm going to, one of these days, we're going to do some ministry together. Years ago, Nate Johnson, he said, he told me, he said, Kelly, he said, one of these days, we're, we're going to all, we're going to all have to connect. So I'm believing God's going to do it at the right time. But Nate Johnson had made a post and he was literally speaking about the scripture where Jehu yells, roars, throw her down. The fall didn't kill Jezebel, honey. It said that the horses began to trample Jezebel. It was the horses that trampled Jezebel, that killed her, and then the dogs began to eat the flesh of her dead carcass. I can't help, I can't help yell and roar at that, because that, woo! The dog days are over, the horses are coming. Oh my God, the horses are coming. Here they come. This it took me to a whole nother place. I'm telling you, my belly was burning on fire. I said, my God, Lord, it's all in the word. The horses trampled the hell out of Jezebel. The fall didn't kill her. The hooves of the horses, which represent the remnant of God, the priesthood. A holy, 
priesthood, a royal priesthood. We are. That's Joel chapter 2. It says, here they come. They were, they had the appearance of horses. And listen, it said behind them, they consumed the stubble with fire. But before them, it was like a garden of Eden. Okay. We could go into that scripture. But I'm, I'm going to do that on another broadcast. But listen, guys, this is, this is powerful. Okay. So I'm telling you that we are in a very exciting time because look at God. Look at even here. It said, wow. There, I'm telling you, sound of freedom, sound of freedom, is it, it, it's going to skyrocket. The the prophet, the prophet that's coming to this. I don't even call it a movie. I call it a movement. Okay, this was birthed by the spirit of God. This was birthed by the spirit of God. This covert operation, everything that they did, and I'm telling you, he is waking up so many people. They are going to suddenly. You're going to see these. Righteous giants begin to literally stomp the hell out of these serpents like Black Stallion the movie, baby. I think I'm, you guys, I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to do it. I think I want to do it right now. Okay. How many of you, like me, love the classic movie Black Stallion? Okay. This was a childhood movie. One of my favorites growing up. My sister and I love the Black Stallion. That the, the storyline is a, a young boy who's on a ship with his father. A storm comes and, there, you know, the ship is destroyed by the storm. But there is a black stallion. It's a racehorse, an Arabian racehorse. That boy is connecting with this stallion uh, in the movie on the boat before the boat breaks apart. His father passes away. But the boy is stranded on an island, okay? And there's a scene where he starts waking up because it was a horrendous storm. He starts waking up and as he starts to wake up and open his eyes and when he starts moving, there is a cobra, a snake right in front of him that raises its hood that's about to strike, okay? Now this one we're talking about, the enemy. And in a split second, out of nowhere, this black stallion is like, Woo! I mean, it rears its hooves up and it stomps the hell out of this snake. That is how we, the royal priesthood, are moving with the Spirit of God. We're rearing up, ready to stomp the hell out of these evil serpents. We are going to trample the S-H-I-T out of them. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. What did God say? He said, America will no longer be your trophy wife, Satan. You will not desecrate this land that was consecrated to me. And like a dog that shits in another neighbor's yard, I will take your demonic dung and like a farmer that uses manure to fertilize the soil and prepare it for a great harvest... That is what I'm going to do in this nation. And I'm telling you, sound of freedom, sound of freedom, the movement going to rescue those who are trafficked. These children are these children who are tortured and thousands murdered. God is going to use their demonic dung, these evil bastards. He's taken their demonic dung and he's bringing forth the greatest harvest and he's using sound of freedom as a kingdom catalyst and a wrecking ball. It, you're right. It's millions. It's millions. There's millions. Millions of children. Millions. Just children who are sex trafficked. That isn't even including these young teenage girls. That all, all the stuff that's that's attached to this uh, attached to the demonic drug cartel. The remnant of God. We are the horses that are going to trample the hell out of their industry, just like Jehu said, "Throw her down, eunuchs, throw her down." 
and the horses, his horse, I think they were his horses. I'm going to have to read it. They trampled, they, they, they stomped the hell out of that. They stomped the hell out of Jezebel. I, uh, I, I, I think I want to, I think I want to create a slogan. I think I'm going to stomp the hell out of Jezebel. That's it. See, we're going to trample with our mantle and then on the back say, stomp the hell out of Jezebel. That's right. Joel 2, baby, here we come. The dog days are over. Okay, you know also why they call it the dog days? Because they put him on a leash. And you know in these satanic evil practices, they literally put these children or they put these adults on a doggone leash and they make them stand like a dog. It's evil. And God said the dog days are over. The horses are coming. Uh-huh. My royal priesthood. The killer whales are going to tear down this evil industry. Okay, I'm I'm roared. I'm revved up. I'm ah. Woo! That's right. God's look at God's stampede from heaven. Stomp the hell out of Jezebel. All right, you guys. Thank you, Jesus. That's it for tonight. Because, I, oh no. No, you know what? I got to read some of these scriptures. Okay. I always do this most of the time now. We're going to read a couple of these foundational scriptures. Especially when it comes to striking the ground. And we're going to go to 2 Kings chapter 13, verse 18. Oh, this is so good. Where it says, Then Elisha said, or... Take the arrows. So he took them. Then Elisha said to the king of Israel, Strike the ground. So he struck the ground. Now there's more to the story. But I just want to read this part. Where Elisha, the prophet, is telling this king of Israel. Okay, this is in 2 Kings 13, 18. To strike the ground. And this song I played earlier, we strike the ground for the wells of revival to burst forth. There's a war going on in the heavenlies, and we're tearing down wicked principalities. Woo! And we're raising up righteousness. And we're raising up righteousness. Woo! My God. You guys got to listen to that song. Okay. Now I'm going to... Genesis chapter 20, verse 18. This is powerful, okay? And I believe I, I, there's revelation in this word right here. Genesis chapter 20, verse 18. For the Lord had caused infertility to strike every woman in the household of Abimelech because he took Sarah, Abraham's wife. Now, what I'm going to decree right now, okay, is already that I'm seeing it. He strikes the house of Abimelech, okay? He causes the women in the house to become barren. What spiritual revelation is going on here is God is striking industries. He's striking industries. He's going to cause industries to not be able to re- produce. He's going to move and cause that spiritual infertility. Oh my God. On the head of their fertility, God. Okay, let me say that again. Thank you, Jesus. God is moving to strike the head of their God of fertility. He's striking He's striking these industries with spiritual infertility so they cannot produce. They cannot bring forth. They cannot flourish. God is causing them to bleed and hemorrhage in their bank accounts. So he says, oh, isn't it? it? It's, look at how God moves. Oh, you're God of fertility? No, I'm going to cause infertility to the God that you serve that's all about fertility. Okay. And these demonic entities that wanted to cause your lands to be barren, uh-huh, they're God of fertility. 
in the demonic realm, God is going to cause your ground to be so fertile and it's going to flourish. Remember, God said, your battlefield's becoming a harvest field. Your battlefield's becoming my harvest field, says the Lord. He's causing your ground to be so fertile, like fertile myrtle. Uh-huh. Fertile myrtle, like the myrtle tree. <laughs> wow, that's good, God. Fertile myrtle. Okay, the myrtle tree. I'm going to look this up real quick because this is good. Myrtle tree. It's M-I-M-Y-R-T-L. Okay. Okay, here we go. Wow. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I got to look it up in, okay. Myrtle tree. It's a healing. It's all about, okay, see. Myrtle tree. Biblical me. Okay, here we go. Here we go. God said your land is going to be like fertile myrtle, like the myrtle tree. And it says here, listen, myrtle tree is called Hadass, which remember Esther? Her Hebraic name was Hadassah, which comes from myrtle tree. Oh my God, this is deep. The Holy Ghost is speaking right now. Look, he said fertile myrtle. Look up the myrtle tree. Myrtle in Hebrew translates to Hadass and Queen Esther before she became Esther right to that Persian king her Hebraic name was Hadassah which came from Myrtle tree do you see how deep this is going God says fertile Myrtle because several people in the remnant are getting ready to be promoted and put in positions that you woo, Jesus put in positions because God anointed you for it Fertile Myrtle, my God, he is binding the hand of that fertility God that wanted to cause so many in God's kingdom to be infertile, to be barren. This is deep. Woo! Okay. It says the tree's name appears in these verses, Isaiah 41, 19, Isaiah 55, 13, Nehemiah 8, 15, and Zechariah 1, 8, and 10, 11. My goodness. <laughs> it is used by the Jews in their Feast of Tabernacle. Sukkot. Feast of Tabernacle. Okay. Wow. Leviticus 23, 40. And you shall take on the first day the fruit of splendid trees, branches of palm trees, and boughs of leafy trees, and willows, and of the brook, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God. Okay. Wow. Wow. There's Oh my gosh, you guys, listen to this. Zechariah has a vision of the myrtles, the myrtle trees. Listen to this. Myrtle trees appear in one of Zechariah's prophetic visions. Oh my God. Zechariah says, "I saw in the night and behold, a man riding a red horse. He was standing among the myrtle trees in the glen. And behind him were red sorrel and white horses. Then I said, what are these, my Lord? The angel who talked with me said to me, I will show you what they are. So the man who was standing among the myrtle trees answered, these are they whom the Lord has sent to patrol the earth. Man, fertile myrtle. Wow. Look what came out of fertile myrtle. Wow. I heard that spontaneously a few minutes ago from the Lord. And they answered the angel of the Lord who was standing among the myrtle trees and said, We have patrolled the earth and behold, all the earth remains at rest. Then the angel of the Lord said, O Lord of hosts, how long will you have no mercy on Jerusalem and the cities of Judah against which you have been angry these 70 years? And remember, God said he would throw, he would throw, the, I think, yeah, the Israelites into the bondage, into slavery of Babylon. He said, I think it was 70, 77 years or 70 years. You guys, you guys might remember 
But he said after those 70 some years of being yoked to Babylon, God would break the yoke. Okay. He would break the yoke and they would be yoked to Yahweh. God said, I will judge that nation. I will judge the king of Babylon, but you will be enslaved to Babylon for 70 some odd years. Do you know God gave me a vision in 2021 and I saw the hand of the Lord breaking an egg yoke and the yoke fell on Biden's head, okay? And this is not just about Biden, it's about what Biden represents. The yoke in the vision literally fell on his face and was sliding down his head. And I saw Kamala Harris and some other people in this vision that represent the ones that are puppets to the puppet master Satan. God is breaking the yoke of Babylon off of this nation whether people like don't believe it or not, it doesn't matter. God is breaking the yoke. That's where the rebirth of this nation is coming. Because he's breaking that yoke. And I'm telling you, you're seeing it with what God's doing in Hollywood. The, the strike that's happened, what? It said it hasn't happened for over 65 years. Okay? This strike. This, this, this stuff is historical events that are taking place. My God. Okay. My goodness, Jesus. Woo! So this is deep, man. This is deep. So God, I mean, look at, wow. Zechariah has a vision of myrtle trees and it's connected to what? Horses. Horses. Dog days are over. The horses are coming. And let's go back to what? The horse has represented the angels of the Lord. And what did the angel of the Lord say? And they answered the angel of and, and they answered the angel of the Lord, who was standing among the myrtle trees, and said, We have patrolled the earth, and behold, all the earth remains at rest. Wow. Wow. The remnant of God, we remain at rest as we watch the Lord do the rest. And we're seeing it. Because God is striking the enemy in major ways. Major ways. It's powerful. Okay. Wow. Wow. Listen to this. Exodus chapter 3 verse 20. I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all my miracles that I will perform in it. After that, he will let you go. Isn't it interesting in other translations, the word strike is smite. So the word smite in other translations is, is the same as strike. And God is calling the plagues over Egypt his miracles. Meaning, he's taking vengeance. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. You don't have to do nothing, my people. No, I'm going to strike the head of Egypt. I'm releasing my miracles. Wow. Look at this. Man. Woo! Exodus chapter 7, 17. This is what Yahweh says. Here is how you will know that I am Yahweh. Watch. I will strike the water in the Nile with the staff of my hand, and it will turn to blood. This is what God is doing right now in those bank accounts. And again, I'll go back to this. Thank you, Jesus. Right here. Right here. What is the statement on the headlines? A lot of blood in the water. Why actors and writers strikes are a big blow to Hollywood studios. Is that not wild, guys? That God makes them state in the article, a lot of blood in the water. That's their statement with this Hollywood strike. And look at the scripture, Exodus chapter 7, 17. This is what Yahweh says. Here is how you will know that I am Yahweh. Watch, I will strike the water in the Nile with the staff in my hand and it will turn to blood. Woo, oh man, my God. Just, just take a hold of that. This is the word of God. It's, look at this. I'm going to see if I can, you guys can see this. Hold on. Let's see if you can see it. 
I'm gonna try to do it. Wait, oh, Holy Spirit, help me out to do this. There it is, okay, here it is, okay. Can you see it? There it is. A lot of blood in the water. You guys see that? Okay, I don't know why the light's doing that. That's powerful. That is, that is God's, I'm striking. Woo, I'm striking them with the plague. This is powerful, you guys. And listen, um, I know, I know that I have not been on as, as fluent as I used to be. That is changing. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing short videos that I'm going to upload. And then what we're going to do is you need to make sure if you guys haven't subscribed, the only reason I would say to please subscribe to my YouTube channel is number one, so that you can click on the notification. So if I upload any videos, you will get notified. And make sure that you always check the community page on YouTube or if you're on my Facebook, you'll see a post. I will always, I will always upload a scheduled broadcast and you'll get it through StreamYard. It'll pop up and you'll see it when, it, when, when I go live. And also, but again, I'm going to be making shorter videos because I'm just going to release the word of the Lord and make sure that I upload it so it's easier for you guys. And when God wants me to do a deep teaching, I will do a deep teaching. But that is how we're going to do it. Um, and so I'm going to be also coming back with some cadences because God is, I feel like a volcano that's about to erupt with some serious, militant, spiritual cadences on my keyboard. It's coming back, okay? All this is coming back. So I say, hold your horses. <laughs> hold your horses. I know, it's like, what happened? And I noticed, you know, I even noticed like, you know, where I, I was like, where, where, where'd everybody go? But I had to, I have to obey the Lord. And God didn't want me to do any cadences for a season. But they're coming back, okay? So also another thing, if you come on most of the time, please make sure, I noticed this too, I'm learning this, make sure that you hit the like button because for some reason, YouTube, well, it's something with their algorithms. If you don't respond, then they're not going to make sure that this broadcast pops up in their YouTube feed and other people know about this video or this broadcast, okay? So... Make sure that you hit the like button. It's not about me, all right? It's not about, I don't care about likes or unlikes or nothing. But the purpose of this is to make sure that it, the, it, that it connects with the, whatever their algorithms are so that way people are made aware because a lot of times they won't get notifications. And so unless the Spirit of God leads them, they're not going to get it. So you guys, please help me out. Please help me out by commenting and hitting like or whatever. Just, just simply because it's tied to their algorithms. That's the only reason I'm here to serve you, to minister the word of the Lord. Not about, please, you know, it don't matter who likes me or who don't. I'm anointed and appointed, mantled with militants. The militants of the Lord. I'm anointed and appointed to restore the priesthood and to make sure to deeply disciple. That's what I'm called to do. So I, I, I'm not, I don't care about no, this ain't no popularity contest. This is about the presence of God and deep discipleship. Okay, let me stop a minute. And um, while you guys are still on here, let's talk about I want to hear your comments. I'm going to move this out of the way. I want to hear your comments about what you felt with the the origins of Hollywood, the documentary, also what you got to see, and also what the Lord is saying tonight, man. I, I got to scribe that down with the myrtle, fertile myrtle. This is powerful. And let me tell you something. God is releasing his mantles of militants on several and I'm believing 
that God is going to do that strong in this ministry. He's going to release his mantle of militants. Okay? That's the roar. That's, that's the authoritative tone from his throne. Okay? Getting serious. God is restoring his holy fear over the nations. He's restoring it. It's enough of this little kumbaya around the campfire mess. A lot of these churches, and I'm going to say this because this has been stirring up in my spirit. A lot of these corporate churches have only taken their ministries and structured it like a campfire. The revelation I got with this is a religious spirit will build a structure to prevent the fire of the Holy Spirit from spreading like, like, a, like a camper builds the structure to, to make sure the fire doesn't spread, okay? And this is serious. God is done with the campfire churches. He's done. He says, you're trying to build a structure of man. I didn't tell you to build like that. I didn't tell you to design like that. What you've done in your flesh is you have literally stifled the fire of my spirit. You have literally built a structure of your program so that my fire does not spread and take hold of so many of my people. My God. So see what, you know why I said that? Because these mantles of militants, and even the Lord led me to, how many of you are familiar with Emily Clark? Eh, no, Emma, Emily Stark, excuse me. Emily Stark. I believe she's from, I think she's from England I, or, or from Scotland. I can't remember if it's Scotland. I think it's Scotland. And she released a word over America and she released a word about God's militants coming upon the remnant. And I, I was, I laughed because I've been carrying that militants for years. And nobody can mess with it. You, a militant spirit, you are fearless, okay? You are fearless. Jesus said, my perfect love casts out all fear. You understand? A militant spirit is where you are so you are so saturated in the love of Christ because you take that covenant with Christ seriously and you go into more intimacy even in the long suffering you begin to cultivate that that there is no fear can't even touch you you're fearless so militant spirit there you're fearless because it's it's the ministry of God it's literally the 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 Christ Jesus the hope of glory in me Okay, I'm going to I'm going to stop here because I don't want I'm going to make some short videos because there's a lot that God has been speaking to me in the past week and a half. And I'm going to put those in little pieces and I'm going to make short videos so that way it's going to be better for you guys. It's going to be better for me. And whenever we do a long broadcast that God wants me to do, I will make sure you're notified because it's going to pop up if you click live on the on your phone, right? You see YouTube channel. When you go to this YouTube channel and you're on your phone, click on the live, not the shorts, not videos. Click live and you will always see an upcoming broadcast where I'll go live. Make sure you check, okay? Because I know I was censored. But it takes you guys to make sure that you do your part. And just go on there weekly, check community page. I write, I'm, I'm posting prophetic words that God is releasing right now. Check there and check the live. Uh, and then you'll see when I do go live in, in broadcasting. Okay, that's important. Oh, she is from Scotland. Thank you, Fearless. Okay, I thought so. I thought, I was like, no, it's not England. I think it's Scotland. I, I, I love her accent. One of these days, I want to go to Scotland. My my bucket list is to go to Ireland and Scotland, man. I oh, want to go. Them Gaelic warriors, man. Woo! Last of the Mohicans, baby, and Braveheart. Militant mantles are being released straight from the Lord. 
And listen, these militant mantles are only being placed on those in his remnant that he trusts, that honor his leadership. And I'm serious. He's only going to release his militant mantle on those that honor his leadership. Okay? That's important. Huh. Okay. Praise God. <laughs> so, go see Sound of Freedom. And again, if you if you say, man, I don't have the finest, go to Angel Studios. And I'm sure you're going to see where they have the, 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 li the link you can click on to request a ticket. Because they're giving out tickets because several people all over the world are donating to Angel Studios to make it available for those that say, I don't have the money. You, They're giving out tickets, okay? So go to Angel Studios. Make sure you watch the Sound of Freedom and honor the movement because this is serious right now. All right. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. And by the way, when I let, let me just say this, because I, I, I see your I see your comment, Joyce. And listen, when what I'm saying to you when I talk about God is imparting in this season his militant mantle on those that have not received it yet, he's releasing it on those. When I say the honor his leadership, it's not there are those obviously that, that they have they're so they carry that meek spirit. It's not yet militant, right? And so this is a place that God is, is bringing several in the remnant because he's chosen you, right? He's chosen you. He put it in your spiritual DNA because of what he's called you to do. So I want to put emphasis on what I'm saying because I don't want there to be misunderstanding. The militant mantle is coming upon those that are chosen to operate in that area because it's linked to their calling and this is, it's not just about those who honor his leadership, okay? So I didn't want to have any confusion there. But you got a calling on your life. You are a serious intercessor. And God's about to release his militant mantle on you because of the path that he set before you. And what he's called you to do to roar in spheres of influence. Okay? Woo! I just wanted to, I just wanted to make sure there was clarity there, okay? All right, you guys. Thank you for joining. Praise God. We're gonna end. We're gonna. We're gonna end this broadcast by playing. We strike the ground one more time, and then we're gonna be. We're gonna be done. Here we go. We gotta. We gotta close out. Look. We. We gotta close out with. We strike the ground. Here we go. Hold on. Okay, here we go. This is so awesome. This is a militant spirit right here with Woo!
come on. Tim Ballard, I think it it's it's connected to Mormon. I think he is Mormon. So, but he's got a lot of people that like are are Jewish and they release Hebrew. I saw I saw a documentary where someone on his team was literally singing a Hebraic prayer. 
But I am believing that God is going to come upon them and baptize them with the fire of the Holy Spirit. My God. So I'm releasing my faith. <laughs> For they can hear this song. I, can you just see Jim Caviezel listening to this? Can you see Jim Caviezel? I mean, hearing this. With all that he witnessed with that sex trafficking and all the evil. And all of a sudden the power of the Holy Spirit hits that man. And he starts breaking out with tongues of fire. Woo! I got faith. Childlike faith. Come on. Oh. I got Woo! Okay. Put that song in front of him, Jesus. I love you guys. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May you be anchored in his perfect love, his perfect peace, his truth, his love, and his joy that is your strength in Jesus' name. I decree the shalom of the Lord over you, over your household, over your families, in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. I will see you guys soon with an uploaded video coming in a few days because it's coming. Woo! And a cadence is coming soon before the end of July. Hallelujah. Love you guys.